Ethics and laws play a major part in what is presented to us as entertainment these days. They can become the deciding factor in what is put out for a number of different reasons. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the film industry and how it is affected, whether that effect be positive or negative, by legal and ethical constraints. First of all, what are ethics? Even though for the majority of the time they are points that are defined by laws, ethics are posited by society to keep what it deems as unfavourable at bay. Ethics are taken into consideration by producers and directors within the film industry in order to, among other reasons, be able to market their products to a wide ranging audience. Now laws. Laws, on the other hand, they have to be abided by production companies in order to avoid possible convictions just like everybody else. Both laws and ethics can be seen to both hinder and aid the production of products within the film industry. The Obscene Publications Act of 1959 is a particular bugbear of producers and directors. It often stops realism from being fully, truly realised within the pieces. An ethical constraint heavily related to this law is the depiction of sex and violence in film. The Obscene Publications Act of 1959 picked up momentum in the 1980s much later with the release of a list of 72 films considered by campaigner Mary Whitehouse, her supporters and the Director of Public Prosecutions at the time, Sir Thomas Heveringham, as obscene. These films came to be colloquially known as Video Nasties. The British Board of Film Classification, or BBFC for short, has relaxed its criteria on what it deems as unacceptable. This has allowed for more, shall we say, controversial pieces to be produced. However, the level of interference from campaigners and the BBFC is still much, much too high in many people's opinions, myself included. Now, this is where ethics come in. Violence in mainstream films is watered down to fit what campaigners and the government see as acceptable. You'd be hard pressed to find a truly gritty, realistic mainstream film released in recent years. Films that have a realistic air to them are often seen as great pieces of cinema. For example, Saving Private Ryan, an amazing, amazing film. It received much acclaim from critics thanks to its dark, true themes, violent set pieces, particularly on the Omaha Beach scene, uh, which was also the opening scene to the film, and its believable story. It can be argued that if these films are constantly produced by mainstream companies, they will become less and less impressive due to the sheer number of them that are about. However, the fact that they make for good cinema cannot be avoided. I myself encountered problems of a similar kind, albeit on a much, much smaller scale. I did a year of AS levels before I had to take the BTEC course that I'm on now. For my end project in media, I worked with a friend on a two minute opening scene for a prospective film. The original draft for this, this scene was going to include a fight scene, nothing too violent, it was just a quick insight into the attitude of the character that we were aiming to set up. Now we showed this to our teacher and he said that it was a good idea but it couldn't be done. Why not? We asked. We didn't actually get a definitive answer. What we surmised though was that a fight scene couldn't be incorporated into this uh, piece no matter how much it progressed the story. Now is that fair? The idea that even if it is detrimental to the way that a story pans out, a violent scene can't be included because it may not be in some people's taste? I myself think that it's a bad stance to have. People that enjoy these aspects of films are being looked over in order to please those that constantly campaign to have them taken out of what we see on our screens. It's widely accepted that without the Video Nasties debacle, the Video Recordings Act of 1984 
would not have been passed as law, and that the BBFC wouldn't have been put in charge of regulating age restrictions for films, just like the ESRB do for video games. I want to talk about the Video Recordings Act of 1984 very, very briefly. Bottom line, it doesn't exist anymore. In its place is the Video Recordings Act of 2010. What's the difference between these two, you ask? Absolutely none whatsoever. It was found that the former was unenforceable due to the fact that the European Commission was notified about it as outlined by Directive 9834. So the latter was created. Nothing changed within this new act. The law was just as strict as it was before. I mentioned sex along with violence earlier on, but I never went into detail in it. I believe that the topic deserves to be looked at in the, the same depth as violence was. Sex is still widely considered a taboo in the modern day. No matter what people in support of Channel 4's sexual education shows and other sexually oriented, uh, sorry, sexually motivated shows will want you to believe, sex will always be something that the large majority of people will turn their noses up at. You want to create a peace with sexual undertones? A peace with a message pertaining to sex, the, upper, the, the, the higher ups will say doesn't fit with what we want to sell to our audience, I'm very sorry. As I said when I was talking about violence in films, those films dealing with sex and its implications, when done well, they usually achieve much acclaim from critics. For example, take Fish Tank. In it, a story of a young girl who is introduced to a different world, a sexual world, by her mother's new boyfriend. Although it didn't gain a mainstream release, the film garnered rave reviews. Gritty British realism at its best, said Rotten Tomatoes in its summative review. It won the jury prize at the Cannes Film Festival, and also a BAFTA for best film. Now surely this proves that when sex is confronted in a well done way, it provides an insight into what a large section of the public want to see. Well, that remains to be seen, as the Hollywood machine continues to pump out products that become more generic per iteration. One more small thing before I end this video. Fish Tank not only contains sex, but also violence. The main character is a violent, isolated teen who is violent towards her mother, her sister and her friends. It goes to show that when the two themes of sex and violence are present in the same piece, and the same good piece, it makes for great cinema. However, if the Obscene Publications Act and the Video Recordings Act see a stricter resurgence in the near future, a path that right now they are seemingly taking, these themes, along with many others, may not be seen in the cinema. So to sum up, it's my belief that campaigners and the government hinder the production of good pieces of cinema due to their constant interference on behalf of the public. Thank you for listening.